Hey, it's Paula, and I was listening to the news and reading the news about John Singleton and how sad that is at 51 um, that he's died. I'm 51, <laughs> so that's actually kind of scary, but I guess he suffered from hypertension um, for many years, and uh, it was a stroke complications from the stroke, I guess, that he ultimately died from. So my sympathy definitely goes out to all the family, uh, friends, colleagues, you know, that knew him. Um, I didn't know him personally, but, um, you know, was familiar with his work. But, you know, one of the things that I found interesting as I was looking up articles is the process um, that took place um, after he had his stroke. I guess he had his stroke on April the 17th. Um, he had gone to the hospital, um, wasn't feeling well, had the stroke in the hospital, and of course kept him there. And apparently, um, even though we as a you know public perhaps didn't know, but he was, I guess, in ICU kind of really early on after he got into the hospital. It shows how um, very ill he was. But at a certain point, um, John's mother, I think her name is Sheila, um, got a temporary conservatorship. Now, I know, you know, probably to the average person may not even be familiar with that, but a conservatorship is similar to a guardianship. Um, but in California, it's called a conservatorship. Other, other areas, they may be called guardianships. But that's basically, you know, if a person becomes incapacitated and is unable to take care of themselves or their financial affairs, then temporary conservatorship allows another person to um, handle their business until the person becomes either um, able to handle it themselves. So, I mean, you know, it kind of made sense that somebody needed to step in, um, you know, if there wasn't a wife involved. You know, because generally, you know, it would go to the spouse, you know, to handle business. Um, but if in this case, I guess there wasn't a wife involved. So the mother, who I guess was also his manager, uh, took that responsibility of being the conservator. Um, that means uh, overseeing uh, probably his person, the decisions connected to his person, as well as his finances. Now, it, I also understand that I guess one of the daughters named Cleopatra, was like really upset that the grandmother got this conservatorship, you know, but I guess, you know, like I said, the average person, if you haven't really looked into or know anything about conservatorship, the one thing about, um, you know, um, court appointed conservators are responsible basically uh, for every aspect, you know, of the person that they're um, cons conservative over. And that includes the finances. You know, so, you know, if John had continued to live and um, his mother continued to be the conservator, if the judge continued that to go on, she would be accountable uh, to the court to um, provide information on his status, where he's staying, uh, his health, as well as his finances. Um, she would have to be accountable basically for every penny that's spent in his behalf. Now, you know, if, you know, in the case of him, uh, John, I guess he, they say he has 35 million, who knows how much money on money he had, but that would be a, really a large undertaking. But in knowing that there, the person, the conservator is responsible to the court, could and maybe hopefully alleviate some of the um, the stress or worry um, that you know Cleopatra or perhaps other family members had that the the grandmother John's mother could just run away with everything. I mean, she'd have to be very um, slick, I guess, <laughs> in her accounting because, like I said, sh she would have to account for all of the spending um, done. But the one thing about a conservatorship is a conservatorship ends when a person dies. The conservatorship is no longer effective. So that happened with John. He is has now passed. So now what's left? Um, hopefully John Siegelton had a will and or a trust. Because with a will and a trust, that is his stipulating how his um, uh, finances and assets, how he wanted them to be distributed. Now, 
we know that with Aretha Franklin, she did not have a will, she did not have a trust. And even though I guess her lawyer um, had said, you know, we need to get this together, she never got around to doing it. And I think sometimes our people are like, well, I don't want to think about death. Oh, I'm not going to die, you know, so I'm not going to bother. You know, so there might be a fear factor there. But, I mean, if there's really a benefit, especially if you have a lot of assets, of getting a will or a trust. Um, because, like, for example, with Aretha Franklin, she has four sons, and uh, one of her sons is, um, I guess, has uh, disabilities. Um, and basically, I guess he's 63, but for the rest of his life, he's going to need um, assistance. And there is a conservator or guardian over one of her sons, the one that's disabled. So we have a disabled son, and we have three other sons. Now, with no will... Aretha never stipulated, you know, if she wants, you know, her four kids to get the chunk of money or to get money over time. Um, and the problem with it is that, you know, with probate court and lawyers and, and everything, it becomes very expensive, you know, when you don't have um, a, a will or trust in place, you know. And um, I guess it sounds like the four... The four uh, children of Aretha Franklin, you know, um, are kind of working together and they made Aretha's niece um, the um, person to uh, oversee everything, okay? Um, but, you know, but that being the case, the niece is the one that has the say over everything and how things are done, you know? I mean, so it's like it really gets complicated when... When the person itself doesn't say, this is what I want done with my money, with my finances after I'm gone, it's left up to someone else to make that decision. And sometimes the, the um, children don't have a say at all, you know, if they make someone else the uh, legal, legal representative. Anyways, it can be complicated. But so that's all I say all this to say. I hope John had a will or a trust and that he outlined ahead of time what he wanted done, you know, with his assets. Um, it's, you know, even if everyone decides, you know, the, the mother, the father, the girlfriend, and all the seven children, even if they decide, okay, let's work together on this, you know, you best believe there's going to be so many extra expenses because of it, um, you know, if, you know, he did not have that paperwork in place. So um, those are the thoughts that kind of came to my mind, and uh, I hope that as the days go on that the family is able to come together. It seems that, you know, they say weddings and funerals are the things that, you know, cause the most issues and problems within families, and, uh, and I can attest that um, I have observed that when a person dies, there's like a fight <laughs> a lot of time and it's funny because there's this thing on Instagram that I read um, and it oh, not Instagram but on Facebook and it said he says yeah he says nobody will fight over you you know when you're sick and dying but then everybody fights over over you when you die and they're fighting over the money and <laughs> how true that unfortunately is you know in life but like I said I hope that they can come together you know um, well, one, I hope he had a will of trust, and I hope the family can come together. Once again, my sincere condolences. But, you know, this goes to bring up, this brings up kind of a thought for, you know, all of us non-movie stars, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, maybe, maybe maybe you don't have a million dollars. Maybe you don't have 35 or 80 million like Aretha had, you know. But, you know, maybe you have a house. You know, maybe you have children. You know, um, maybe you have a little bit of money in the bank. You know, maybe you have kids, maybe you don't. Maybe you're living together and not married. Whatever your situation is, it's beneficial to have in writing what you want done. You know, and it's interesting because I was talking to a friend and who um, has been assisting another person who's been kind of ill. And that person is like, you know, really ill, not sure how much longer he's going to live, but that person has five children, you know. And so uh, my friend was like, well, I think I'm going to help him, you know, put together a will or something. And I'm like, yeah, 
<laughs> you know, I don't know if this other person has any assets at all, you know, but even as far as his care, I mean, you know, um, if a person is unable to speak for themselves, is there a durable power of attorney in place? You know, so that, you know, a person's wishes can be honored if they can't speak for themselves. And, you know, if a person has five kids, you know, who is going to be the person to speak for them? You know, it's better to have all of that prepared in advance, you know. And even if there is only two dollars, you know, in the bank, you know, it's better for a person to say, this is where I want my two dollars to go you know, before some, before they actually die, instead of having, you know, the children or whomever is left over fighting over the $2. Anyways, I've done other videos kind of encouraging uh, paperwork to kind of get in place. And, um, you know, as like I said, I was, you know, watching and listening to the information about John Singleton. It made me think about Aretha, made me think about the importance of preparation. You know, and we never know when something's going to happen to any one of us. And it's better to be prepared ahead of time because that leaves those left behind with not having to figure out what you want, not having to guess what you want, you know, but actually being able to deliver what you wanted. Um, and there can be um, peace and a working through the grief that's already going to happen <laughs> without added problems. Anyways, what are your thoughts? Do you have your paperwork? Um, you know, did you, did you know much about conservatorships? Did you know John Singleton? <laughs> Anyways, um, those are my thoughts. I'm Paula Hines Lonergan. Share, like, and sign up to my YouTube channel.